Welcome to the 11th edition of the Rise of AI virtual chat. My name is Fabian Westerheide. I'm an entrepreneur and investor with a passion for artificial intelligence, and I am your host today for this live show. My guest, Mario, he's already in the green room, so we're close to getting ready. Um, as usual, please introduce yourself. We know we're here to, to be inspired, to learn, to have a great time. It's only one hour, but still it is interesting to make some connections. So use the chat to uh, you uh, to post your LinkedIn, your Twitter profile, whatever you want to. In the past, it worked really well. We have here some regular guests like um, Christine, for example, who is here every, every time. We have a new guest here. Um, Yes, so um, just get to know each other. Then I have a new tool. Uh, you don't see it, but I can switch the green screen easily with one button press. That's fun. And topic today is how Mario described it, future optimism. And um, we want to discuss the what if questions. He proposed this, and I like this concept. In the, by the way, the shirt for this. Um, we think about big pictures, about big questions. We will speak about what is what is the implication if something happens, mainly in the technology space. So a little bit like a science fiction episodes today with an entrepreneur and investor, on the other hand, a member of the parliament and um, really cool guy. Um, so if you have any more questions in between, just use the tool, which is down. I would say it's my screen down there. I already have seen that we have two questions uh, committed. I will collect more and then I will later use them. And then let me introduce my guest. So it's Mario, you see him here. Yes, uh, on the Rise of AI conference. Our full name is Mario Brandenburg. He's 36 years old. He has two kids. He's living in Rülzheim. That's in, in the Pfalz. And if you ask me where this is, I have no clue. I had to Google it yesterday too. It's somewhere near Karlsruhe. It is a very green area, a lot of landscape. You can follow um, Mario on Instagram and he's doing regular bra brain runs. So it's pretty cool. He's having a monologue with himself and thinking now while he's running through the woods. So it seems to be a very nice countryside. Um, from my view, I would describe Mario as the coolest member of parliament I know. So he was a cool, interesting person before he became a member of parliament and then he became a member of parliament. He once told me a story um, when we met the first time, he was wearing a polo shirt and khaki pants and we ate an ice cream. I think this was really good set up and he told me he came once to the point where he had to google what to do as a member of a parliament because he you know he's from the FTP so he didn't expect to win but he won I think he's doing a pretty cool job out there um, his background is industry he worked for SAP so he was a manager in the cloud space and you know he knows tech um, he knows how, how does he describe he's normally the geek within all the people in the parliament. And when he speaks with the geeks, he's the old dude. So he's in between somewhere. And I think this is very important. So just to know what his interests are, he works in the FTP in the parliament for the topic of artificial intelligence. I think this is important that a member of parliament says, hey, I work for AI. He works for genetic, genetic engineering or DNA modifications, everything about DNA. He works for the topic of blockchain, which is cool too. He works about drug policy. He works for gaming. I think that's cool too because esports is huge and i think we should do an episode about esports one day and he speaks about rural areas versus urbanization so we will speak about this too a little bit we cover this um so i would say um it's time to bring mario live and first the sound and there the video here we go Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> welcome 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 <laughs> Thanks for uh, having me. And I, I like the, the, the map behind you with, with the, all the money and all the spaces where you have been and um, uh, where you not have been. Uh, that's so, the tragedy. But, but I plan to live a couple of more years. So I hope there will be more little flags in the map. Uh, wonderful. Um, Mario, how do, can you think about the future when currently everything is suppressing? You told me yesterday that you have a, that you used to have lobbies coming to you and telling me, you know, guys like me, hey, we need more AI, we need more this. Today you have everyone coming to you, everyone who has a grocery store, who is a hairdresser, who has a restaurant, like, and they have don't have big problems, they have very, very real problems. 
I mean, it's nice that you think that your problems are a real problem. So <laughs> then we, we actually have issues with AI and research and stuff. But yes, I mean, the job totally changed. Before, more like the, 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 the annoyed futurists were coming up and talking to the tech guy. Now it's like people from the neighborhood really don't know how to live. And I mean, how can you be positive? Um, let's say that way. I'm, I'm super honored for what I can do at the moment, that I can try to push my country forward. Um, but in the end, I'm as well just a normal family guy and a daddy. So if you have like 10 depressing calls, then um, I get one of my daughters and uh, ice cream and sit outside in the garden and whatever, uh, play a little. Because in the end, this doesn't change the world, but at least it's kind of resetting your mind. So the answer is, if you hear that many bad things where you're not really able to help, I mean, you just, you just how should I say, you shift the world and try to soak up something nice, play a little, whatever, have a run in the forest, and then go back to work. So because in the end, um, some people you can help, some you can't. Um, this is, I mean, it's more complex than Corona. There are businesses which probably were that before, but now they have new hope or somebody throwing away money and they think, oh, that could be the rescue straw I needed. But in the end, the problem started before. And there are people who were super profitable, had a normal, ordinary life, and now a, a virus basically crushed uh, their whole their whole idea of living. And um, then you at least try to help and give a little hope. So um, I guess my job is to remain optimistic um, because there are enough other ones who are basically um, depressed enough already. Before we jump into the what if questions, I have one, two more questions about you as a person. <coughs> So you never planned to be a poli politician. I mean, as far as I know you, you never had a career as a politician. You never said like, oh, this is the hierarchy. I go and I know in 20 years I will sit in the member. You did an industry career. And because the FDP has a certain history of renewal and, you know, getting out and in of the parliament, you just made it to the top without really preparing for years for this, right? Yep. So my political experience is basically here in the beautiful uh, town, not even city of Rülsheim. Um, and I did that because I thought you live here, uh, you've got kids here, you bought a house here so you can involve yourself, you know, just saying, well, no, I don't like it. It's not going to work. And then, as you said, many things happened in the end, like a little Rubik's cube. Um, and then everything went to yellow in my case. So um, we were campaigning massively with digitalization topics and um, it's quite easy, let's say, as a studied computer scientist working in tech for more than 10 years to somehow say something smart and impress people. Um, and then things came together <laughs> and they sent me to Bundestag. And now I'm yeah, in the Committee of Digital Agenda, Committee for Education and Research. So I can try to push these topics basically on a federal level. And uh, no, I had no clue what to do in the end. Um, but I had an opinion. So sometimes you just need an opinion and no clue. Um, and now I'm trying to fight my way through and try to convince people that um, this is not go away or this is not like financial crisis. You know, this is when you talk to um, settled politicians, they say, yeah, yeah, in 2009, when there was the financial crisis, they told me, yeah, yeah, we have to do all this banking stuff. And we said, no, we built cars and we were the winners. And now you come with your internet, blah, blah. We can build cars and we will be the winners. It's like, no, that's not a pattern. You were lucky. That's, <laughs> I've got some arguments why it's not the same thing. And um, therefore, I'm, I would say 50% I love it and 50% I hate it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, topic for another time, deep dive into your, your experience as into, you know, political system. We had Thomas Heilmann here two weeks ago or three weeks ago, who okay. was an entrepreneur too, who turned politician. Um, for me, this is like a criteria. Um, I think we need more policymakers out there who think like you, who may think like me, think like him, you know, you think practical and not in career. Um, but we, we had this topic today because you said, Fabian, I don't want to talk about current problems all the time. I want to talk about future things because I'm not allowed to talk so much about the future. So let's do it. And the first question your team sent me from your community is, we have Neuralink, you know, Elon Musk company and others who are working on brain machine interfaces. What if, this works one day, yes? Always assumption. What if telepathy is possible? <laughs> um, so... Honestly, I would love it, but I think we need something like a role-based permissioning, you know? Uh, don't send the wrong thinking to wrong people. So think about having that chat 
with all these people. I don't know how it would work from loudness and like getting questions in via telepathy, but in the end, it would be super cool to do that. So imagine sitting around in like an ice cafe or whatever and don't know what to do and just like pinging around, like who wants to talk? And maybe somebody behind the corner says, oh yes, I like dogs as well or something. So it's like a, like a whatever friend finder on a real cool way. So um, that's the that that's the fun part I would like to see on that, um, and I guess flirting would change a lot. Like you would probably see people sitting in the club somewhere giggling around, just like okay, he's probably flirting or is he reading my mind? So um, if that thing comes up, I think we've got lots of questions to do. How you permission such a system, like wearing the alu hats, you know, it's like. <laughs> I like the question because in 2016, when we had the first edition of the predecessors of Rise of AI, it was a meetup, we had uh, the talk of how to encrypt thoughts. So we had someone who was Dr. Anish Mohamed, who um, was doing research about how can you encrypt thoughts that this doesn't you know happen like you say no one is intruding no one is reading your thoughts but i sent my thoughts to you you have the encryption key and no one else is in, the, in between to read our thoughts but um for everyone out there it's already real technology in the way that you can control computers just with your thoughts you can control your arms uh you know physical bodies and so forth so it's pretty cool and we will come to the point that we have telepathy by the way i like telekinesis so you know i just enter the building and the door opens <laughs> I mean, something I can do with a smartphone too, but I just think, open the fridge, and then the fridge is open or something like this. Um, okay, that was an easy one. Um, since we are here, the topic of AI, and I clustered this around your fields, which you're covering too, what if machines do all the jobs out there? Oh, the classic one. Ooh, we will all be depressed. Um, personally, I think um, that's actually a, a quite nice idea if that works out, because I believe that we would do different things. So I basically, when I was young, I went fishing. So I never did it because I don't have time and there is no no benefit and nothing. So if a machine would do my, my previous work or whatever, I would probably just go fishing and show my daughter how to fish. So I don't think that a system would collapse or something. No, I think we would have more freedom in the end and we would probably as well need less. And um, remaining with the fishing example, so I would probably catch one or two fish, but I would never catch 10 because I can sell them and run a business and, you know, so um, I'm not a critic to capitalism at all because it works quite nicely in the end and nobody showed me something better, but I guess, so you cannot just wipe it off. But if we just gear and shift down a little, and this is what would happen, I guess, because we will not lose all jobs with one like snip you know there will this one will fall off so and i think you need to to s somehow smartly balance you know the change in the system so i i think it's really not or it was like historically seen it was not super human to basically uh, show who you are through your work i mean you know we had like kings and whatever and they were by um by all their bloodlines uh, the kings but nobody said yeah i'm a farmer or something but right now we are an engineer okay that's cool i'm basically i was a computer scientist but what's you know what's the real benefit behind so we are cheating ourselves we're doing nice funny business cards and and the less you can the longer is basically the dibble blah blah what you put in front so it's like a bit like an animal kingdom the more colorful the animals are, the less dangerous they are. And this is basically like I read business cards, you know, if they tell me like 12,000 titles, like, okay, there's probably nothing. And if somebody just says, hi, uh, I'm Alexandra Muller, ah, she might be smart. So I think it's a bit like in, in Animal Kingdom. Okay. I, I, um, so first, uh, Joshua Allen um, commented about Neuralink and, and wait, wait, but why article? And I can recommend this too. Tim Urban is a great author, and I highly can recommend the wait, but why article you have there in the chat. And you, um, it reminds me of my TEDx talk I gave in 2016 about hey, AI will take over your jobs, and you will be happy about it because you have more time to live. Um, I ask always myself, what would change in my life? And I would do the same show with you because this is something human to human based. This is educational. This is entertaining. And AI couldn't do this. Otherwise, we wouldn't, or it wouldn't have to be done. Um, 
but which I, is true for a lot of things or i mean um it, why why do people go to um whatever museums or why do people collect vinyl records or why are they doing that because they they like it it gives them somehow uh, joy or entertainment or whatever and even if ai is cooking me a beautiful meal all, all day and this is probably what i would do to save time here and there going to a restaurant and know there was somebody preparing this for me being nicely served so I, I, it's super cool if you see the automated new restaurants and if they can whatever cut prices and people can get healthy food for a cheaper price which like especially in the us and that stuff um, would be a little bit better let's say in common if, if um, the, the healthy food would be cheaper if you live in the middle of nowhere like where i live it's relatively cheaper because <laughs> it grows here so um but, but these are things people would still do that and if you are satisfied by being a cook, you just wouldn't care if there is a cool AI cooking machine. The people who cook for a living would probably do something else because they would then find out what they would like to do more. But if you're just super happy for preparing decent meals for people, why would you stop? And this is exactly what you said. That's the point where I'm, or, yeah, what I'm missing in the discussions. You know, we always talk about the depressing part. But then we don't talk about the funny part and we don't talk about the people who are doing stuff they hate. I mean, and that's, at yeah. least in Germany, I guess it's quite, quite a bunch of people who do, stuff, who do jobs I, they hate. Also my personal vision is we come to a time where no one has to work because he needs the money, but everyone can follow his passion and his interest. And if they earn money with this, that's okay, that's fine. But um, you know, this I, there's the whole class of working poor. People have two or three jobs and they don't make enough living um, to cover all the costs. I think this is a system problem. I also don't like about the SPD, like everyone has a right for a job. Our mandatory goal is that everyone is working. I would say, hey, why don't you change and say, no, our goal is no one has to work anymore and it is optional. You know, so everyone then can be free and then you you, know, you want to be a lawyer, be a lawyer. You want to be a talk show master, you're a talk show master. But no one wants to be at Burger King and flipping burgers all the time. So, yes, I think we, we, I, I would like to see the change in society that we don't optimize for working more, but more optimized for having more free time, having more human time, family time, etc. Discussion for another time, but I like it. Um, next question. Uh, and this was asked too from the audience. What if AI... Our machines receive civil rights. Um, basically, that's that's uh, that's a discussion which normally comes up with elderly politicians after like seven beers. Then they start to ask these questions. So, what happens? Probably not a lot. So it's not that spectacular as it sounds, to be honest. I mean, you would not grant a chatbot like you know <laughs> a human or civil right. But if we go down the ladder, to be honest, why not? There is a law system. There are things which they need to do. There are things which they're not allowed to do. So um, that one, to be honest, I don't think it's it's super futuristic. We don't have a need as of now, because if we're honest, if we look at the examples, I mean, why would I grant an, an app or a recommendation system uh, nationality? So that's not going to work. But with more autonomy, like maybe with having autonomous ships driving around the nationality might then here and there you know start to make sense so this is like the outbound area because with the sea rights and blah 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 we might see that right here and maybe even the law system so if you don't so probably this is could be an outcome of inefficient politics because if everybody is somehow going on with doing the stuff national wise there might be benefits of giving whatever rights to ai to come to whatever national laws. I think this thing will more or less vanish, this idea. If we come up like in Europe, you know, you should basically uh, sweep your own floor. Uh, <laughs> that's how you would say it in, in German. We need to somehow manage it to get like a European law system. And then there might not be a reason to have a German uh, AI or a French AI, because to be honest, I love Germany. I'm a German citizen, but like I would be European citizen as well. So, uh, you know, I would still live here and I would still like uh, Riesling more than Chardonnay. But in the end, I would be fine to be a European, you know, because the, the, the bigger, the bigger, um, how should I say, the, <clears throat> the bigger picture makes sense. And for all things, I really care. And this is mostly tech and research. So it's, <laughs> it sounds odd, but I, but I care for immaterial things <laughs> so you cannot really touch them and if things are basically non-material um 
the EU is fine enough. You know, you can regulate it from there. So I never would regulate whatever to get my license plate from the EU. So this is stuff where people want to go to where they live. But why is data? Why is data protection? Why is education regulated, you know, by province? So is this there like seven plus three? Is it different in Bavaria than somewhere in France? I don't get it. So we could set that up like on a European level. And then I guess we would, this discussion would dry out, to be honest, because I don't see big benefits. So I'm not in rejection, but I don't think we would earn anything from, from doing it. Why yeah. you have some AI in the basement which you're waiting for to make it French or Spanish or it's like so, <laughs> was it your question? <laughs> to, um, Damian Börselager, member of the European Parliament, he will be guest in two shows. I think it's in four weeks. He will be guest here and we will speak about this a European approach to AI. Um yep. And the other thing is I read, I'm a lot into AGI, you know, artificial general intelligence. And I started a couple of years ago, oh, it will be here soon. The more I go into it, the more I'm like, damn it, that's so hard. That's so tricky. Uh, I can recommend, I think it's Netflix um, Explained. They call it Netflix Explained. It's like 20 minutes documentaries, which are really good. And they have one about intelligence too. And they describe all the forms of intelligence and then then compared with nature. And you figure out that nature is brilliant and they have figured out to build a lot of AGIs out there. Rats, mouse, octopus, dolphins, humans. Yes, we're all AGIs, um, just na natural ones. And, <laughs> and we can't even copy this. We don't even understand it. We think still we are the only smart one out there. Well, you have, for example, I didn't know pigs have the same brain capability of like a three or four year old kid. Uh, so it's pretty amazing there. And if we can't fix this, it, AGI will be... Um, um tricky too i'm just reading dustin is commenting on this and um we also will have him talk uh, with Ulrike, dr ulrike frank about ai in the military so we will talk about how to use ai currently in europe in the military or how it's not to be used there so i just read the keyword there um let's jump from to the next topic which is i call it cyborgs Uh, and with cyborgs, I call the whole part of DNA modification, DNA upgrading. So cyborg is out there, human, which is implementing a little bit of artificial things in himself. So it's enhancing a new, you know, you lost your arm, you get a new arm. It can be neural link, so telepathy, this is a cyborg. If you use a cell phone, this is a cyborg. This is kind, kind of a cyborg too, too. Even I, I can take it out or in because it's, you know, it, augmenting my voice and my audio. Um... So you have two kids, okay? Yep. What if you could select the genes of your unborn baby or alter them or cross them on a list? So would this would, so probably I would first have to talk to my wife because it means we would have three kids and then we'd probably be divorced. So that's, that's the tougher one than your cyborg thing. <laughs> that's actually my, so real life is always more complex than the future. Um, Well, well, let's let's think about it. So, um, hmm. to be honest, I'm quite satisfied with the two I have. So I would probably not um, use it or tick the boxes. But um, there are many friends around me which um, we're scared for for real reasons. So I'm not allergic to anything. I don't have any diseases. I even haven't had like a doctor for 10 years because I never needed there to go. And then I bought a house and I needed insurance. So I need to find a doctor. So I'm really healthy. Same for my wife. So, you know, we came with, how should I say, from a greenfield approach. But if you're allergic or if you have problems or something, um, I really think that that you can be so convinced and positive. And then you would probably tick some boxes, you know. Um, and to the discussion with um, having, um, yeah, whatever, designer babies. So um, I, I think it was Netflix as well, uh, Unnatural or something. They were talking about that. And there... Uh, One university did a study, which I found quite interesting. Um, I think in Russia somewhere, you can already choose the eye color. And um, the statistics were showing there was basically um, not like every like, like the Germans think, oh, yeah, everybody blonde, blue eyes. So, you know, we had a shitty history there. So that's our that's our problem. But no, it's not true. Brown eyes and green eyes. So it was basically the same. So there, there was no move only having blonde and blue eyed babies. And I was looking at that and thinking about it. And it's true. Imagine you start a video game with your friends and you can build a character. So they never look alike. 
and they mostly never looked like myself. So why, you know, this idea of eugenics and blah, blah, it was there, it's shit. So that's the shitty road we can go. But why are we only discussing the shitty road? So I'm not pushing to make that happen right now because I think people cannot handle it. But I think in 20 years, it's absolutely normal. It's really absolutely normal to tick the boxes. So like to create a character um, because it will start with doing the diseases and whatever. And then for the next generation coming up, it will be normal. Then we will ask these kids with like, let's say they are 10 or 12. So uh, you were CRISPR, um, do you feel that? And they will say, no, I'm lucky. As if you talk to people with like trisomy 21. So we had that discussion in Bundestag, if um, basically pregnant women can have these checks um, and it's a big ethical discussion, you know, because is it an illness or is it just a defect or, you know, are we allowed to heal it? Or in the end, if we say people have it, are we killing them? Because 90%, we know that from the Nordics, will then not get that baby. So my personal, and this is basically how I voted, my, my, personal, um, my personal view on that is that information by itself is never wrong. So providing information is always correct. But what you do with it, or basically, you know, how it's, uh, how it's connected to different things, then the, 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 the questions start. But just providing the information can never be wrong because I think uh, society basically is growing on that basis. I, I, I jump in here, yes, yep. um, yeah. if you're too long. First, I recommend the movie Gettica out there. It's from the 90s. It's one of the most mind-blowing movies if you have seen original. If you haven't seen out there, put it on your list, Corona bucket list to watch Gettica out there. Um, at the end, and this is not spoiling, we speak about this um, class where everyone can have designer babies. And if you didn't do it because they were, you know, they had sex, the parents, and because they had sex, there's no designer baby. Um, and it's the natural way. I would challenge you, I by get the that. way, you would not cross it, the list. I challenge you because then your kid would be in class and everyone would be super, no, no, on the long term, everyone would be smarter, healthier, longer running, better, you know, better health, everything, better skin. And your kid would be the only one having pimples, losing hairs when it's older, is smaller than everyone else, maybe having a heart defect. Um, and it will be in minority. So I believe once we start with DNA modifications, this is a huge box. On the long run, it's great to get rid of illnesses. There are a couple of books out there I'm reading, especially on this topic. Um, I, I would say you, you want the best for your kid and you don't want to say, oh, sorry, kid, you're the most dumbest one in the world now just because I had sex with your mom. Yeah, um, you know, I would challenge that. that. To your kid. I would challenge that because this is because we think that whatever being super smart is the key. So maybe then this would be the case, but my kid plays the piano like hell because it just loves music and feels it the other way. And then all these super rich, nice hair, shiny people would go to basically an opera house where my ugly, whatever piggly kid is playing. And I would say, this is so beautiful. I don't get it. I've got all my mathematic degrees here. I just don't fucking get it. So, so this, the world is not that easy. Even, even in your dystopia, it's not that easy. No, it's not true. Because so I, I hope that your kid is good enough that we have them in the Philharmonie soon in 10 or 15 years. Um, <laughs> they probably won't. They, they probably, so I'm not a musician. Kids can't jump, but it will be, you know, by the way, you will never tune, oh, I want my kid to be smarter or live longer. It will be more, uh, I want to exclude heart defect. I want exclude obesity. I want to exclude Alzheimer and so forth. It's more like excluding a lot of sicknesses. But which is fair, You excluding Alzheimer, where's the problem? There, there is I no, I may... problem with this. I would do it right away. I once had the saying with my wife, hey, I want to wait until Ken build a designer baby. And we haven't agreed on this yet. <laughs> Alzheimer is basically the right to be forgotten in GDPR. I just realized that. <laughs> That's the, the human version of GDPR. Okay. <laughs> no, um, that was a stupid one. There was a question in the chat about... Yes, um, I will. I, will, I, will um, I have them here, but they, they are okay. a little bit AI focused. I will collect them and I will answer most of the questions in between. I want yep. to have one more for the part of Cyborgs. Um, Let's assume you can do CRISPR in real time and you can ex you know, amplify body parts of yourself. What would you change about yourself? Amplify. Tough one. Tough one. Um, 
I would probably um, enhance myself to get a real beard. So like from, from the growth of my beard, I remained like 11. So even after like three weeks, I don't even, I don't look like a, a real male. So I would definitely do that. And probably I would, so in general, I'm relatively happy, but I, since I wanted to try it out, I would probably make my legs a bit more muscular because if I wear a skirt, I could be a model, but like for the wrong gender, to be honest. So even when doing sports and stuff, so um, I would probably crisper, crisper my legs a little. So interesting. So I would, if I could, I would implant a neural interface one day. Yes, I would like, like oh. to have a dashboard in my inner eyes. I will also oh. can imagine to have contact lenses or even replace my eyes one day. And then I, you have like, you know, your human spectrum is very limited. And then you can see infrared, then you can see, you know, you can see night vision, but you also have your inner dash dashboard. And by the way, which is great for augmented and virtual reality one day, you just have the screen in, within. I could imagine uh, I would change um, some sicknesses I have, like, or, uh, you know, um, gicht, obesity, everything which makes me old and fat one day, you know, makes me bold one day. Um, I have a couple of things I would like to, which is just, you know, looking better and the other one, which means living longer. I think I would not tune anything in my brain about intelligence for now, unless it's like proven like, hey, this injection boosts your IQ by 10, you know, 10 points or something like this, whoever will figure this out. But I can imagine that, um, um, I, I struggled with this because I tried to do some research for, for the talk today mm -hmm. and it's it's like a huge break. If you go into enemy and in sci-fi, people are like super enhanced, like in Blade Runner. They're like either androids or true cyborgs, but there's nothing in between. There are very few movies where they just say, hey, I just amplified because I lost a finger. I just have a stronger finger and which is now a you know, 3D touch sensor or something like this, or I can't shoot lasers out of this. I don't know. It's... Um, there's always a, a, a turn fully machine or fully human, but I believe we have a time where we're mixed in between. But okay. this is one one sentence to that, because yeah. you need to make a movie out of it. You know, to be in between a normal doesn't make it to Hollywood. So this is why you see that. And I'm, I don't think people would freak out or go too far. And my counter argument to that is like, take organ farms, you know? So this is a beautiful concept for rich people to live longer. Do we have them? Like may hopefully not, but maybe just a little, but we don't do them on a big scale because like ethically we say, no, this is absolutely not what we want. We have an agreement and we don't have it. So we underestimate that people in the long term want the best. And therefore I don't think we would super free out and that stuff. There would be some, but then we would say, look, these are freaks, but I don't think that whole humanity would go crazy. So I will read out a comment by Joshua because this is also a podcast. Also, it's an audio and not everyone is watching today. Yeah, some are just listening or will listen later. And what I like, Joshua just commented on this. He says, um, it's a question of cost intensive. Yes, I mean, at the beginning, it's highly expensive to, to do yourself. And he sees it. And I totally agree that we have the problem of a possible tier two society in which the performance optimized people live against the large class of normal, unmodified people. I would even say this will be even more. You will have the, the system where we have the cyborgs, the androids, the, 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 the people you know, having all the technology accessible and even having uploaded themselves one day and everyone who's left behind. This will be a very, very diverse setup. And I think this will give us a lot of time for discussion and regulation and how to figure this. But I agree, every technology brings at the beginning advantages to those who can afford it but we learn from past not forever i mean costs were mainly going down like cell phones highly expensive and you had to carry in your backpack and today everyone can afford one and um basically playing it back to politics as well so what joshua said um that's real but in the end that's an outcome of hesitation and not taking decisions so if for whatever you can um, decrisper your Alzheimer genome. So yeah, you crisper, you don't get Alzheimer. So the faster this is legal, the faster this basically becomes a normal, um, a normal thing to do within the list of uh, what insurance pays, the more people can get it. The longer politicians say, oh, I don't know CRISPR, ooh, I don't want to touch it, ooh, it's a fiddly thing, the longer the time span is for rich people to go where, where it happens anyway. So. Um, all these things, what you are mentioning, that's a problem of politicians not taking responsibility because you only extend the little T bar where this shit can spread. So if you say, okay, that's CRISPR, that's what we're going to do. 
So this is what's forbidden. This is what has to be legal. And if it's legal, everybody has to have it. So at least in, let's say, countries where we provide big um, health systems. So then it's okay. But the moment you push it away and say, ooh, let's talk about building cars because everybody likes it. So this is the, prob the, the, the thing where the problem starts. That's a good point, and I agree with Joshua. And yeah, one... Joshua agreed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one question we had in between two. It's just uh, jumping in. It belongs to this part. Is um, is AI uh, is ethics a part of discussion in the EU Parliament or in the German Parliament? I already know the answer, but please tell me. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> It is. So uh, if you're an ethics, um, if you're concerned about ethics, you shouldn't. Um, to be brutally honest with you, it's basically a too big part of the conversation. So um, we only talk about ethics and then you are, you know, it's, it's, it's like a fine line where you talk about things which really make sense to regulate. And this is the job of politicians. Or it's cool to talk about, and I'm also like that, but then you should not talk through regulation. You should talk and have a beer. Um, and things which are absolutely in the future where it makes no sense to regulate. So um, ethics is super, super big, and, and all the examples of whatever, um, the, the soap dispenser, which basically um, couldn't see the black hand, and all the, the chatbot, which become racist. So these examples are there reoccurringly, but for the German parliament, if I look at the German big things in AI, oh wait, let me, these are all of them, none. So, and we talk about regulating it because one soap dispenser two years ago, somewhere in the US did a real, real shitty thing, not wanna wipe it apart. But the thing is, Amazon said that already, Microsoft was turning off his chatbot and released all that stuff. So I cannot see hiding right now because they all know and they all dream of millions and billions of dollars and if they try to hide that they are gone so this is one of the little things how amazon google how they all can die you know messing around with that thing the world will be super duper pissed and you can see that with the ban on facial recognition so i mean i do facial recognition like 10 times a day. No, that's not 10 it's probably 100 times a day because in that scope i don't have an issue with it like if they film me when i just have a walk i have an issue with it so but at least Amazon saying, look, like we got our hands off for one year, you can already see that pressure. And so, yes, it's heavily discussed, but sometimes it's really not helping, um, at least not if you're a politician who cares about research and education, if you regulate too hard, because then there is the risk that all the research goes to places where basically you can do that. And I'm explicitly not talking about killer robots and all that shit, which everybody of us hates, but um, facial recognition is something, you know, uh, the technology is there. And then I rather have researchers having a look at it and then we know what to ban or where to have moratorium, then they're not doing it. It's a bit like with uh, genetic engineering and biohacking than having people doing it in their garage. So, um, you know, it's better if you're basically under the lens and somebody knows what you're doing, then you're doing it in your backyard and I it's smashing again. in. Yes, yep. uh, you I know, it was two minutes. <laughs> yes, two minute rule. And uh, by the way, we had a really good talk with uh, Sean Moore, which was the last virtual chat. He runs a facial recognition object detection company. And we spoke lengthy about exactly this topics, about how to use it, not to use it, bands, technology, etc. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, go on Rise of AI and what we watch it. Uh, here on Crowdcast, I have already the upload for you to prepare it, so I will publish it there soon too. But Yes, um, I read about how to do a good podcast is you reference former episodes regular. So people have a reason to to listen in. Smart guy. Next, Smart guy. next topic, we speak about city versus space. And uh, I have here the nice question. What if we stop living in large cities? then I would probably have a lot of new neighbors. <laughs> so because then you would probably live here. Um, I mean, easy one for me, um, nothing would change. Um, personally, I would think it would be better. So I'm, I'm not a city hater, but I think it has, um, it has a history why we did that through industrialization, you know, to put the workplaces there to have efficient transportation ways. And it will always be that we have big cities 
but what I personally question as well is if we really need mega cities, you know, so the, the whole smart city thing is super cool, but to be honest, if we wouldn't have stacked up people like um, actually more or less like pigs, if you look to some countries now, um, then we wouldn't probably need a super mega smart city because it would just work, you know, so that like, like a smart city is as well a bit of a, or should I say, we don't know what else to do. And um, having more virtual and digital jobs, I think um, it's possible, you know, it there will always be these melting pots. And I mean, if you're young, you want to do clubbing, you don't want to sit somewhere in the forest. If we have telepathy, maybe it works still, but you will always go there. But how many people try to move out of a city once they, they tend towards 40 or towards kids? So you see there is some natural thing in you that you don't really want it. So I challenge that we all, every politics is pushing to the cities. It's a huge trend in the world. Everyone is moving into cities because there's the the capital, the knowledge, the jobs. I mean, Silicon Valley, it's a, it's a hub for itself. We need this close interaction. At the same time, I challenge like, hey, like, why do we have a need for a job and a need to work? Why do we have a need that everything moves to the city? Why don't we run a politics that everyone has a house, has its own garden, can have dogs, can have kids? I mean, we have a, we live in the city and the kids from our neighbors, they play between the trash cans. Yes, all the trash cans are in the yard and the kids play there because they can't go on the street because there are cars who kill them. They have never seen a yard of them. Some have to go on vacation just to, to be in the green on purpose. So I challenge this. Why do we have to look in the cities? Why don't we try to move more in the green? Um, and actually, it would be better for basically for the planet as well. You know, if you see like really population and all that stuff. So it's not it's not happening somewhere in the countryside. It's happening in the cities and you cannot blame the people because they just try to make a living. I mean, OK, we, we all can blame us for plastic and that stuff. But in general, everybody's just doing his or her tiny part and trying to make a living. So the big system is not scaling. And yes, I really don't get it why we push for urbanization and that stuff. So we need to uh, basically turn that reel around. And I, by myself, I lived in big cities, I lived in the US, and I was clear that I like it to not live there. But when we bought the house, and um, I basically was the owner of, no, it's eight apple trees as well. So this was never my plan, and I would never, never dreamed to have that many apples. I started to make my own juice and stuff. To be honest, I loved it. So there was never, you know, in, in my real agenda as a computer scientist, and now I love it, now I have like, now it's 13 trees and I was basically planting all the other stuff because it's super cool and everybody should have that chance to do something like that, you know, having a frappuccino in a decent city. Okay, I get that, but you can do that one time. But honestly, if the world sucks, go down, cut the tree and eat an apple, you know, you calm down, you really calm down. And this is what I miss if I'm in Berlin, Mitte, um, doing my parliamentary job. I really soak up home when I go back. So I jump in because we have more questions, some really cool questions, and I have speed up a little bit now. What if virtual reality is better than the real life? <laughs> Talking to a gamer, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a massive problem. I spent like one real time year playtime in the world of Warcraft defending Ogrima, you know, so and I, I still hate the Alliance. And I cannot respect people playing dwarf paladins. So this is something which really is like deeply in myself because I really spend that much time in a game. So um, honestly, that's the only one. I don't really have a super good answer because I'm infected by myself. So you know, I think we would still go out because um, like the thing with, with uh, making kids, I don't think that you can do that as good virtually like <laughs> as in reality. Um, but we see that, or I, to, I, I play it back to you, we actually are seeing that. Look what we are doing right now, it's one hour in the internet, so I think we are moving towards that. What's your choice oh, on that? I have an Oculus Rift with uh, 360 degree sensors. I have the, it's in the evenings, a yoga room, and during the day it's like a VR room. And um, I, I like the contrast, by the way. And it is, VR is amazing. I mean, there are certain things uh, during Corona, I couldn't play uh, doing sports. I couldn't play paintball. So I went into played ego shooters in real time. Or I just traveled to, 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 to Burning Man and just, you know, or to the Mount Everest just to get a little bit of glimpse. And it's better than doing nothing and not getting out. Um, but now... But 
Okay. Yeah, we have to speed up. Go for it. We have to speed <laughs> up and have a, have a couple of more one. Um, this is, by the way, uh, someone can mention if they recognize the movie or not. I made it a little bit more challenging. What if we would live for hundred, hundreds of years? Angela Merkel would still be Chancellor of Germany. <laughs> 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 no, I don't want to have it. No, um, no. Um, it would just not be fair in that case. Okay. Nobody, no, it's just not fair. Nobody gave us that right. Um, so hundreds and hundreds of year. Um, I think if we make it, and I mean, there are not projects working on extending lifespan. I think if that one happens, we wouldn't even regulate that like with a speeding limit or something. Um, because, you know, there is no point that saying this little piece of planet is mine forever. So basically, I just brought two kids up. So and it's their right to do the same mistakes, the same experiences, the same stuff I did. So there, even if we manage that, I think we would have a limit just like a speed limit. It's like, okay, you have 100 and then you need to leave because it's just not fair. But that's an interesting thought because I often think like, I, I believe we would live like vampires. Yes, being very careful, but very rich wisdom, normally like like wise and having a lot of wealth, but it lead to huge problems. By the way, I don't think we would regulate it because all the parliamentarians, they are very old already and they could extend their career by another 30 to 50 years. But I agree, it would be interesting. So you would say regulating. I would say if we could live for a couple of hundred years, that means we would die. Yes, just we could extend it because you get new body parts, you know, you can have new organs, you just can replace your body. Okay, this leads to the second but, question. Uh, do we? Yeah. Would, now I need to ask it. Is there a point why we need to live physically and run around and then like produce rubbish and eat stuff? So I would go for brain upload. So if you know, I can some I can be somewhere in the cloud, think around. If somebody wants to know what I would have said, they can download me. But I don't get the point of blocking the space for younger ones. And this leads me to the second what if questions. What if you could upload <laughs> content? just tell me where i'm in <laughs> i'm absolutely in so this is like imagine you just said vr and you went to burning man so super cool we should actually go like together in real um but imagine how you you could really just download the brain of somebody and even have that you know downloaded while you're wearing your oculus rift or on a rainy day you know just downloading barack obama's brain and seeing his career how he made that or something or playing wimbledon with a young boris becker or something that's fabulous that's that's better than any museum and yeah looking at yeah as as looking at the muck oh yeah somebody has oh yeah mm, somebody has used that muck like thousand years ago you know why not be that guy or not be or at least you know like see the world through the brain and the eyes of that guy so i would honestly love it and i really really hope that we can do that because then even you can could talk to your grandma once again or something you know so we need to have that we definitely need to have that so i and um, this was a topic in one of our rise of the editions two at the beginning um what if you could upload yourself some say like dr trent mcgonaghy is the only way to compete with the machines enhancing your human he calls it human plus yeah humanity plus um i have a really good book which is called the quantum chief i recommend to read it quantum chief and there we have this iteration thing so a couple of humans were able to upload themselves and then it's describing a couple of books how society involved around all of this and that you meet like oh this is mario um, uh, 3.5 because it's the third generation and the fifth iteration within this generation and then uh, either you can fusion yourself and merge yourself with a master code or not and it will be very interesting but let's say you can upload yourself that also means you can download yourself that means you can use sleeves and this is what we see in the background this is one of the sleeves of altered carbon and the idea of sleeves is a little bit like matrix but on a positive thing um, yep. you can put your conscience in a new body. <laughs> what would you do? How would you use your sleeve if you can transfer yourself in a new body? What would you, would you choose and what would you do with it? Yeah, it's, it's some, <clears throat> there's a bit of a dispute with my other question, you know, the, um, where actually, who is it? Dustin mentioned that um, uh, regulating the, the um, how long people can live is against the Grundgesetz which is right, but we don't have that problem yet. So I don't know if I would really do it to shift my body to somewhere. So I'm really normally liberal would not draw lines, but um, 
in that case, we have a physical limitation on planet Earth. We don't need to talk about sustainability and all that stuff if we replicate or we don't go away. So I'm, I'm there for fully enabling any freedom, any free will, any whatever. But, you know, that's where I would draw the line. So I, I really like myself, but I don't want to have four of me <laughs> and I don't need a copy of mine. So I'm fine with my own myself. And therefore, until nobody shows me how we can live without, you know, destroying the planet, it would change. But as of my little knowing right now, I would not even participate in that probably. So I, I have, so on the business side, I would maybe place some sleeves of mine so I don't have to travel by plane anymore. I just, you know, sit on the chair and then I wake up in China and can do business physical there. One idea. The other thing, I would love to be diverse. You know, being like in a body of a woman, so at least understand at least for a month mm -hmm. what a woman is doing, suffering through menstruation and having boobs and having, you know, other emotions and like like having a true understanding for differences in hormones and body. And I would I would love to play around with all these diversity stuff for. But do you really need the body or wouldn't the brain download be enough? That's that's where I draw the line. It's interesting. It's, it's it's a question of technology. If I could just link myself and exist and just being observer, you know, like I think um, there was was the movie where a kid was always like watching through the eyes of the mother or something like, weird. Uh, if you have the brain, if you have consciousness, you can feel it. You know, you would not actually have boobs, and I really understand that point, and I know why you brought that up. <laughs> but still, a brain download should be enough to make you happy. Why would you block some space with you know having like five bodies? Okay, Tina's commenting just and saying spoken like a true man, one of us. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, that's what we do with life. Um, let's <laughs> jump, jump more. Um, one question which came from you. What if everything becomes customized? Yeah, no, it was it was not myself. I'm not asking myself questions, at least not if I'm sober. I asked my team to basically do that, um, to, to, to trick me in. Um, so that one, I think uh, it's actually quite cool because we are going there, you know? Um, so if everything becomes customized, I think that's as well the question to, um, if we don't need to work for a living, we would probably start customizing stuff, you know, to somehow differentiate. So I think this is the way we are already going. If you think about like uh, 3D printing, lot size of one. So before we had to do every like in a, in a serial way, you know, with industrialization, so we're moving to that part, and I guess this is this is as well a piece of the answer. What to do with your time if you're not forced to do work? It's probably customizing stuff because you like it a bit better if it's red or whatever. So next question. I, I I'm fine. Next question. What technology makes you fear? Or cringe? Like, what is the technology where you think first, like, oh, I really don't want to have this? I mean, for sure, it's uh, it's not it's not the technology. It's always the use case, you know. So I'm like right now. Um, so there is no technology by by being there. You know, a technology is neutral. So I cannot be scared of neutral things. So I mean, it's a piece of paper. If you write something insulting, I'm insulted, but it's still a piece of paper. So I mean, for sure, nuclear bombs and that stuff like that's that's creepy shit. You know, nuclear power. So different thing um, as well with facial recognition. If you do it like the, the hardcore way as we you know started start to see it in some countries. Yes, so it gives me a cringe. In general, no. So I'm, um, I would rephrase the question, which, which use cases. And the use cases are basically already um, always the same. Um, if it insults my, my personal freedom and, and my right for privacy, and if it insults a real, real big number of people who had never the chance to basically say that we want that, like with any bombs or wars or whatever. Next one. Um, what if we would see humankind as a virus? <laughs> I mean, in some meetings, I already do. <laughs> so, <laughs> Other question, aren't, aren't we viruses? So um, there's, there's, this, there's this joke, you know, the, the joke, like two planets meet. The one says, how are you? The one other says, oh, I got humans. So, 
and, and there's some truth to it. I mean, if you're a planet without human, you're probably fine. If we are rocking around like little ants doing CRISPR and man, I've invented nuclear power. So it's like we're really itchy. So I mean, I like these viruses. I, I married one. I made two new ones. So, but in the end, we, we are probably close to being some sort of it. Okay. What if we could travel the multiverse? Yeah, then um, I would leave now. <laughs> so um, I would definitely, uh, multiverse would be like heaven, to be honest. Um, even the, the boring universe would be enough for me for now. So that's one of my biggest, um, that's actually um, what makes me scared, that I basically die before knowing if there is life out there or not. So because I really, really don't don't want us to be the only thing, you know? So this is, I really don't want that that's the truth. Um, there's so many ideas. And when I was a kid, I dreamed of so many things. I really just don't want that it's us and that's it. So um, traveling multiverse, I'm in, we can start right now, but I would be happy with like the, the boring universe already and find somebody. What if there is no purpose in life? <laughs> then we all do a pretty good job in not going crazy you know <laughs> so, so um and actually it can be that there is no purpose like what, what's the purpose the purpose is being happy so um tough one really tough one um i think there i let's let's face it i guess there is purpose and i hope that everybody finds his or her purpose. See, my, my theory is there is no purpose in life unless reproduction. But if you consider be, us being a virus, we shouldn't reproduce that much. And um, I think the only purpose in life is you find your own. You have to define yourself on something external, like in religion, like in ideology. It's like work. Uh, or sometimes it's something you fill in yourself and that we don't even question ourselves that often. I think but there I, is no purpose in life. Like there in is no, no, there is no purpose. But you can define one and you fill it with one. If yeah. you would stop existing and if I would stop existing, life would continue and that nothing would really change. Uh, yeah, but it sounds so depressive. But um, yeah. uh, <laughs> if there is no purpose in life, how stupid are we to sit here and doing video calls about freaky technologies if there is no purpose? So I, I want that there is some purpose, but it, then it's somehow friendship or whatever or entertainment because it's fun. <laughs> So if I you, guess you need to find it. Spiritual people, and they talk about enlightenment, once you reach enlightenment, you see that this is all nonsense. But <laughs> either you know we, we have the enlightenment capacity to, to leave this, so we are still continuing to being this, I call it red race of human life, of our society. So this leads me to my last question. What if this is a simulation? Then it's a pretty good one, and I hope that it goes on for a couple of years. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, um, someone just mentioned the Matrix, yes, but imagine this is, or other ways, do you believe this is the ground basis for simulation? Like, I mean, if I just said that I hope that there's something out there. And then there's like 50, 50 chance that it's smarter than us, you know? <laughs> um, so, and then it might be that we are the Truman show, but there is nothing wrong in being the Truman guy. I mean, I've got a nice house. I've got a beautiful wife. I've got two kids. I'm a happy person. So then probably I'm a happy Truman. So um, then I would round it up with your purpose question. I don't really care if I'm the guinea pig, as long as I'm super happy and um, right now can try to make like, um, the life of other people better or be inspiring or the, the stuff which basically um, gives me power. So it's okay. But in the end, and that's my last sentence, I really would hope that I know it one day. So that's the only, the only thing I had. I want to know if, you know, if I was a guinea pig. This is my, I don't want to die before I discovered other forms of intelligence. I don't want to die before I know if this is a simulation or not. Yes, at least at the end, I want to see the exit and, you know, maybe. Okay. Um, by the way, I can recommend the Truman Show as a movie. And I can recommend the podcast called Kack und Sachgeschichten, which is discussing in every episode one of the movies. And they do it well in this case. I listened to it and then I watched Truman Show again last weekend. And they said, hey, this guy is living the perfect, happy life. 
He has a job, he has a family, he's having no problems, no disruption. I mean, he's living in his cozy environment without any problems, no racial profiling, you know, no, no riots, nothing happens. Why do you want to leave the almost perfect safe environment? Why do you want to go out in the harsh, ugly, unfair, partially dystopian uh, reality? Yes, because there's uh, a right to see that as well. So uh, let me check for the questions. Um, we have one question here about a uh, law of regulation about AI. I will skip this today because we will have, uh, as I said, a dedicated session to this too. And then there's a question about put, taking a position on transhumanism versus posthumanism versus humanism. Do you want to mention anything if you see a difference there between transhumanism, posthumanism and humanism from your definition? Oh, I mean, it's hard because we only have one one thing really active right now, and I'm basically a human coming from humanism. Um, I mean, I'm in favor of the idea of transhumanism. So, it, you know, it, as we said, there is no reason that we are the end of evolution. So I would never say like we are the, you know, we are the end and what's coming now doesn't make any sense. And um, therefore, I, I'm... I'm looking forward if it really, really happens, um, but I think it will not be our generation because we are the first ones who really seriously think about it, not really science fiction. The next one will be confronted and there is no right only because we work like on a bio and genetic base um, to have to be better or have more rights than somebody, something else, if they ever become conscious, whatever that is they need to have the same rights and if they do it like on an electrical manner or on a nano based whatever manner so then that's the reality so i wouldn't think that we are at the end of the letter okay i like this our time is over uh, everyone please stay in as usual for you mario thank you very much this was joy there was just joy i really enjoyed this and i think we are not at the end of the means it will continue and as long as with people like you and me who are continuing to push the wheel I'm pretty sure exciting stuff is coming up. So we will talk as usual, the private ways. And thank you for being here today. Thanks for the invitation. And basically, it uh, was fun to talk. Bye bye. Have a good day. Um, so everyone else, before you leave, um, enjoy for a moment this, this scenery, this background. Um, this is the idea if we could travel space within our cities and spread the world but coming to the close and if you remember this movie it's one of my favorite scenes from the avengers series and i think it was from infinity wars um next week we have another virtual chat and this time we have raul glavan and raul he is um how do you say he is running an AI hedge fund, kind of. He started to program years ago and he developed an AI which is doing trading for him. And he's so successful with his trading that he is uh, parting of a world competition for trading, but with he's using AI, this is allowed. And with this AI combination, he's number one. So he's not the world champion in AI trading, but he is number one in the whole year on pole position, I think with 110 or 120 percent, which is pretty good performance. And he will talk about us, about the topic, how can you make money while you sleep? Or in other terms, how can you use AI to earn money for you? And we will speak a little bit about the technology, about what he's using, but also about the implications like UBI, a topic he's interested in, universal basic income. You know, if AI is earning money for society, do we still have to take a job? Um, it will be next week, Thursday again, 11 a.m. But before you leave, please, we don't use uh, we will not use crowdcast anymore this is hope maybe the last episode we are using crowdcast crowdcast was great to start but we have them proof as you see i have a green wall i have a little features here i have professional lightning so we move up and crowdcast is not supporting so much we will go to swap card so you have to register your ticket for free on eventbrite you get the links on our social media channels follow them as usual to stay updated or on our website rise of dot ai and then just get a ticket um, and the software will automatically invite you to swap card and swap card has the advantage it has a profile so you can set up your profile either you already have a swap card account 
or you have a LinkedIn profile, um, you can start connecting with people, you can network, you can ping them, you can make meetings. And what we want to develop is we want to collect this community of thousands of people having participated in the virtual chats and want to build a larger network of this. So you can exchange yourself with like-minded, you can chat with them, you can connect with them outside of the scope of this too. So you, I also recommend you to join earlier because you can start networking right away from today see who's else in there and see if you maybe have some some other people i mean this is what we learned during corona we don't miss all the stupid people out there we miss like-minded people we miss having a good conversation we miss you know to be with other smart people in the room we miss to be challenged or relaxed and this is, is what we want to provide you so we will increase this we will build on this we will optimize on this but we will always want to deliver you great content inspiration and meeting the right people. That's our mission. That's how we do it. That's why we do this. And that's why we will continue to do virtual chats and larger formats. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for listening to this, watching this. I will see you, hear you, read from you uh, next week. So have a great day.